Welcome to the specialty Equipment Techniques. Scuba diving is an equipment intensive sport. Equipment allows humans to adapt underwater and safely explore the depths below. It is impossible to dive without it. The use of a properly maintained total diving system not only enhances the enjoyment of diving, but also contributes to the safety of the sport. Yet even the finest total diving system is not maintenance free. This video is designed to give you the basic information needed for minor field adjustments, preventative maintenance, and a better understanding of how your total diving system functions. When you master using and caring for your total diving system, your comfort, confidence, and ability grows, which makes your diving career a much more pleasurable experience. Remember, this course does not qualify you as an equipment repair person. To ensure proper service of your equipment, your SSI dealer offers the SSI Equipment Service Program. Now let's take a more in-depth look at each piece of the total diving system and how to avoid potential problems. Your snorkeling system is comprised of the most basic pieces of equipment. The mask, snorkel and fins. Although they have few mechanical parts, they still require regular maintenance to lengthen their life. If your mask is equipped with a purge valve, check it periodically. If it is stuck open, you will not be able to keep the mask against your face as you inhale. If your valve is stuck shut, you will not be able to exhale. Test the purge valve on your snorkel the same way by sealing off the snorkel bore. Occasionally, apply a light coat of silicone to your mask, fins and snorkel, making sure to avoid the buckles, strap and lens. When it comes time to store your mask, seal it in a protective mask box or a watertight dry box. Many mask straps, fin straps and buckles are unique to the manufacturer that made them. It's a good idea to carry extras of each in your repair kit or an extra backup mask in the event you need a replacement in a remote location. Your exposure system is your barrier against sunburn, abrasions and cold. Whether you use a warm water dive skin, wetsuit, a dry suit, some form of protection should always be worn. The most common type of thermal protection is the neoprene wetsuit. A two-sided nylon suit or one with plush lining will provide more durability because it is stitched on both sides. This also makes the suit easier to put on and take off. However, elasticity and excellent fit are the most important features of any wetsuit. Problems with wetsuits will occur most often at the seams and areas of wear, such as the knees, elbows and seat. Wear can be slowed down by adding pads to these areas and by repairing holes immediately. The correct way to apply wetsuit cement to a seam or patch is to spread a light coat to both surfaces. Then, after it dries, reapply a second coat. Once the cement is no longer sticky, lightly press the pieces together and apply pressure until a proper seal is formed. In most cases, the repair should sit for at least 24 hours for maximum strength. Refer to your dry suit owner's manual for specific manufacturer's instructions on maintaining your dry suit. Your SSI Dive Center has qualified dry suit maintenance technicians available if your dry suit or valves require repair. Ask your SSI Dive Professional about the SSI Dry Suit Diving Specialty Program. With any exposure suit, wash it in fresh water after every use, occasionally using a mild shampoo designed for your type of suit. Lube the zippers to keep them from sticking. When it comes to storage, hang your exposure suit in a dry, cool place. There are several weight systems available to the diver. The most common are the weight integrated buoyancy compensator, the standard nylon belt, lead shot belts, and pocket belts. No matter what type of weight system you choose, 
It should be adjusted to fit you properly. Your SSI dealer can help you choose a weight integrated BCD that best suits your diving style and needs, as well as teach you the proper weight placement. If you are using a weight belt, you should position the weight evenly on your hips. Hold lead weights in place with weight keepers or by twisting the belt through the weight. When trimming the belt to the appropriate length, leave about 6 inches on the end so the belt is easy to release and can be adjusted over various suits. Refer to your SSI Equipment Techniques Manual for more information regarding the care and maintenance of your snorkeling, exposure and weight systems. The scuba unit is the diver's lifeline to the deep and is the most critical part of the total diving system to keep in excellent condition. Internal corrosion is one of the biggest concerns in cylinder maintenance. It is very important to have your cylinder visually inspected by your SSI dive center annually to detect internal damage. Reputable air stations require a current visual inspection sticker and hydrostatic test before filling a cylinder. If your cylinder is emitting a peculiar odor or taste, it should be inspected for contaminants such as oil, moisture and carbon. To prevent corrosion, especially from salt water, avoid breathing your cylinder dry. In fact, it's a good idea to always maintain some air pressure. You can also detect the presence of contaminants by a buildup of particles around the cylinder valve opening. And last, if there is any kind of leak in the burst disc, valve knob or valve cylinder connection, you will need to refer the valve to a service technician. The valve for an aluminum cylinder should be lubricated when it is visually inspected each year. The modern air delivery system is designed to deliver an adequate amount of air to the diver on demand at any depth within the sport diving limits. First and second stage regulators should be serviced by your SSI dive center at minimum on an annual basis. If your air delivery system is not working properly, do not dive with it until it has been serviced. Poor maintenance is often the cause of first and second stage regulator problems. A few minutes spent on basic maintenance after each dive will help keep your regulators in good working condition. After each dive, replace the dust cap to keep salt and debris from entering your hoses. Allow water to flow through the second stage mouthpiece. However, avoid pushing the purge button as this will allow water to enter the hose. Inspect your hoses regularly for wear and leaks and replace them as needed. To give your hoses a longer life, add protectors to relieve sharp bends near the first stage. When storing your regulator, do not hang it by the hoses. If water enters your second stage while diving, it may be caused by a loose retaining ring, a torn mouthpiece, or a hole in the diaphragm, but is most likely caused by a bad exhaust valve. There may be a hole in the valve, debris caught inside, or it may be folded over and plugging itself. Remove the exhaust valve T to check for problems. If your regulator is free-flowing, it may be misadjusted or be damaged internally. If the air is escaping from your regulator first stage, do not use it until it is checked by your SSI dive center. If the air is coming from your second stage, field check it by pressing the purge valve and then tapping it against your hand once or twice. It may just be a piece of sand that is trapped inside. If it still doesn't stop free-flowing, due to construction and design. When properly maintained, your total diving system is like a reliable buddy. Scuba diving equipment, unlike any other sport, is life support equipment. The SSI Equipment Service Program is designed to keep your life support equipment properly maintained. Your air delivery system, information system, and buoyancy compensator are the core of your life support system and should be serviced annually or as recommended by the manufacturer at your local SSI dive center.
When planning your travel, it is a good idea to have your equipment serviced well in advance of your departure date. This will also give you the opportunity to get in a pool and make sure they are properly adjusted and working correctly. Nothing is more disappointing than to arrive at a diving destination and find out that you have a minor equipment problem. Another important part of your total diving system is a specific spare parts kit. Your SSI dive center or resort can help you assemble all the necessary pieces you need for minor field maintenance. In addition to this specialty, you might want to consider taking the SSI Equipment Techniques Specialty. This is a course designed for those interested in basic field repair and proper equipment maintenance. The buoyancy compensator can be one of the most vulnerable pieces of equipment you use. The BCD is susceptible to punctures and tears because it extends from your body and can be caught on coral, the boat, or other objects. The BCD should be checked for leaks by filling it with air and then submerging it in water. Some BCDs will come with patch kits, but any major tears should be serviced by your SSI dealer. Also, check the function of the overpressure relief valve by completely filling the BCD with air. Because salt water and sand can damage the BCD, it is important to wash it thoroughly after every dive. The best method is to completely fill the BCD with air and then partially fill it with water. Next, Shake the BCD lightly so that the water enters every part of the interior and then drain it. You should wash your BCD occasionally with a mild cleanser that is also a conditioner and mold inhibitor. These cleaners are available through your local SSI retailer. A power inflator should easily inflate and deflate without sticking. Notice if the inflator continues to provide air after the button has been released. The hookup and release mechanism should work smoothly and secure tightly. If your power inflator has an integrated alternate air source, be sure to check it for leaks, as you would for your primary second stage regulator. Computers, pressure gauges, depth gauges, Compasses and timing devices are critical pieces of equipment for the diver. Most diving instruments are delicate and can be damaged if handled carelessly. Prevent damage to your instruments and to the reefs by attaching them to your BCD. Don't allow them to swing free into the sand and reefs. Compasses are considered essential equipment by experienced divers but they require additional training and practice to be used to full advantage. In fact, an entire SSI navigation course is available from your SSI dive center or dive resort, which includes extensive information on selecting, maintaining, and using compasses. Compasses can be checked by comparing them to another compass. However, computers, pressure gauges, and depth gauges must be calibrated. Computers are sensitive pieces of equipment. Take care to wash them of salt and debris, as you should with all your diving instruments. Any computer problems must be handled by a professional dive center or the manufacturer. Keep your computer clean and well protected when traveling. Your scuba unit is your lifeline to the underwater world. Proper maintenance will keep it in good condition for many years and many exciting dives to come. Some pieces of equipment, such as flashlights and divers' tools, are considered accessories, even though they are useful on every dive. Other items, such as propulsion vehicles, underwater communication systems, metal detectors, and sonar devices are fun and enhance your hobbies. Many advanced divers enjoy using accessories as a way to increase their comfort and interest in diving. 
complex equipment such as scooters and sonar devices will need to be serviced by either a qualified repair facility or returned to the factory. You should follow the manufacturer's directions on how to maintain and care for your specialty diving equipment. There are two basic styles of underwater lights, rechargeable and non-rechargeable. The non-rechargeable versions are usually less expensive, but you must continually replace the batteries. Rechargeable units may take up to 15 hours to recharge, limiting the number of times they can be used in a short time span. Find out what electrical current is used at your destination, so you will know if you can use your rechargeable lights. All underwater lights are sealed with one or more O-rings. These must be kept in good condition to ensure the watertight integrity of the light. Lubricate the O-rings with a light coat of silicone grease periodically and clean the sealing grooves. To avoid internal damage, remove disposable batteries before storage. Also, please be environmentally friendly when disposing of your used batteries by following the manufacturer's recommended disposal procedures. Test the light to make sure it still functions properly. If it doesn't, return it to your SSI dive center for repairs. Information on selecting, using and maintaining lights is available in the SSI Night Limited Visibility Diving Program. As you know, it can be very difficult to communicate underwater, especially in an emergency. Manufacturers are constantly trying to develop new products to make communication easier. Because sound travels four times as fast underwater, even dull noises can be heard easily. This is why tapping your cylinder with a cylinder banger or other solid object works well. In an emergency situation, mechanical devices that emit a loud noise are effective. There are several underwater audio communication systems available on the market that allow you to speak to and hear other divers or those at surface. Such systems use wireless sonic technology to transmit voices between transmitters attached to the diver's second stage regulator and receivers that are attached to the diver's mask. Your SSI dealer can give you more information about underwater communication devices. When a diver is on the surface in high wind or waves, it can be very difficult to get someone's attention, especially if you have drifted quite a ways away from the boat. A whistle that is attached to your BCD is one basic device to use. Mechanical alarm systems are also very effective. Other communication devices include signal lights and smoke flares, but these are not as widely used. One last device is more of a means of signaling than communicating, but it works well in high seas and is easy to carry in your BCD pocket. The Surface Marker Buoy, or SMB, is a fluorescent colored nylon tube that can be inflated with your regulator second stage. Many live aboard dive boats and dive boat operators require that each diver carry and use inflatable surface markers because it helps facilitate diver pickup following a dive. It's hard for boaters to see divers at the surface and would be impossible to know divers are underwater if not for the diver's flag. There are two kinds of flags in use. The red and white diver's flag is the most common in the US. Use it when diving from a boat or the shore. The blue alpha flag is flown in international and inland navigable waterways. It's a good idea to mark your equipment so it can easily be identified at the dive site and to protect it against theft. Permanently mark your wetsuit, BCD and other plastic items with a permanent magic marker, while metal items such as regulators and instruments can be engraved. Scuba diving is an equipment intensive sport. Your comfort, safety and enjoyment underwater depends on the condition of your equipment. With proper maintenance, your total diving system will last for many years. Take care of it. It is your partner underwater, specially tuned to your own body and needs.